Hello, I'm Gabriel, and in this video, we're going to be finishing the restoration on that old fridge that we started in the last video. You may have noticed in the last video the humongous dent at the bottom of the door, which was far too deep for body filler alone, of course, and had to be repaired old school with a hammer and dolly. I couldn't get in there with a hammer, however, so I had to cut into the inner lip of the door to gain access. Once that dent was hammered out to my satisfaction, I went ahead and welded the lip of the door back together as best as I could. It was then time to start filling, priming, and sanding. So after I finished removing the remaining trim, I whipped up a batch of body filler, which I needed to fill minor dents and imperfections, as well as to smooth out the leftover flaws from hammering out that huge dent. I'm almost done repairing that big dent that we had over here. When doing any form of body work, uh, what's important is that when you feel it, you can't feel any form of imperfection. Sometimes you may not even be able to feel them with your hand, so it's, it's, it's good to use a light uh, and, and glare the light onto it to see if you can detect any imperfections. Um, they may seem very minor, but believe me, once you go and you apply a, a nice glossy finish on this, a nice paint job and, and the light reflects onto it, all you will notice is those tiny imperfections. After many hours of sanding and repeat applications of filler primer to smooth out all the scratches, nicks and dents, it was finally time to get the fridge ready for paint. I cleaned everything as best as possible with a silicone and wax removing thinner and proceeded with a tack cloth to pick up any remaining dust on the surface. I used an automotive epoxy primer to seal the surface from the old baked on enamel on the fridge, as well as the spots where bare metal was exposed and the filler primer and body filler that I had used. Although epoxy primer is much harder to sand, it does provide a very strong surface as well as excellent adhesion for urethane-based automotive paint. I am super exhausted. I hadn't used a paint gun in quite a few years actually. So um, furthermore, I'd never actually sprayed a, um, a metallic paint. 
So, and the metallic I, I found is actually is quite a bit more um, tricky. Overall, I'm I'm pretty satisfied. Yeah, so the, the wiring on the compressor down there has gotten pretty crusty and I would say very questionable and probably unsafe. So I went ahead and bought some, some new stuff, some 16 gauge wire. I bought some three wire so this way we can ground the fridge. It was never grounded which is why uh, the, the electrical plug when you plug it in only has two prongs. Well, we'll now have three. We will ground it to the chassis of the fridge. Uh, modern appliances of course are all done this way, but back in the 50s, they didn't really care about safety, apparently, so. I chose not to go with foam insulation in the door, partly because it would have been a little awkward to do with no easy way to hide the fill holes, but also because the existing insulation had done a pretty good job with no signs of condensation, with no rust or mold like the fridge walls had. I got the fridge off the cart now. It's back on the ground and uh, it, it's it's done. This fridge is completely done. The project is complete. The, uh, the, the question remaining, however, is does it work? Only one way to find out. Oh, I hear something. Nice and cold. Six in the morning, I just woke up and I'm coming to check on the fridge, make sure it didn't catch fire in the night or something crazy. I know it looks okay, and let's take a look. Twenty-four hours has passed since we plugged in the fridge into that meter. 
So let's go take a look at how power hungry this fridge was over the last 24 hours. This is a little bit silly, but the timer up here only goes up to 24 and then it, it goes back to zero. So it's actually been 24 hours and five minutes and 20 seconds here. And the kilowatts consumed are 0 0.71 uh, kilowatts. So that is 0 0.71 kilowatts in a period of 24 hours. My shop at 70 degrees, the very thick walls filled with foam, uh, a proper door seal that actually seals the door correctly made a huge difference. Uh, I think safe to assume that it is as good, if not better, than most modern fridges today. Now you have to realize that uh, the walls are very thick with good foam insulation, so a lot more insulation in this fridge than most fr modern day fridges. The inside of the fridge is very small compared to most modern day fridges. And this is of course added to the fact that there is no self defrost feature. The terrible stereotype about uh, bad energy consumption on old fridges pretty much I think comes from fridges uh, from the 70s, 60s, 70s, 80s were actually uh, pretty bad. So there you go. Uh, fridge from the 40s and 50s can be extremely energy efficient if properly uh, put together.